Hi there, everybody. Because I'm one of the most common insects on the planet, I'm sure you know that I'm an ant. But did you realize how much my cousins and I look like a wasp? Take a close look. See how slender or thin our waists are? Mine is unusually flexible, making it easy to bend and twist. Count my body parts. You'll see that I have three, just like all other insects. My head with its long antennae, my thorax, and my abdomen. Here's something you might not know. I have two stomachs. Both are located in my abdomen, but one is for my own digestion, and the other, called the crop, is just a storage bin where I keep food for other ants. The fact that I store food for other ants should tell you something about me. Ants are social insects. We raise and care for our young in ant colonies. There are many different kinds of ants with many different ways of life. Carpenter ants build their nests in wood. Leaf cutter ants grow fungus on the leaves they cut in vast or very large underground gardens. A fungus is a type of living organism, not a plant or animal. Mold is one kind of fungus. The aggressive weaver ants live in leaves they bind together in trees. Aggressive means forceful or ready to attack. The huge colonies of army ants travel in groups, eating everything in sight. Trap jaw ants can jump distances of more than 12 inches. Harvester ants build huge nest mounds where they store seeds. Beware of the red fire ants. They sting. I am a black garden ant, the type that you may see most often, so that is the kind of ant that I am going to tell you about today. Like many other ants, we live in underground tunnels or passageways. Bees have honeycombs, paper wasps have paper nests, and we have tunnels, miles and miles of tunnels, full of little chambers or rooms, hundreds of very dark chambers. A colony may have as few as 12 ants or as many as a million or more. The center of an ant's colony's life is this nest of tunnels. An ant colony begins with the queen. A young queen is born in one colony, but leaves that colony to start her own. Her wings carry her into the air to find a mate. Once she mates, she sheds her wings and immediately finds a nesting place underground. There she builds a chamber and seals herself inside to lay her eggs. When ant larvae hatch, the queen cares for the first brood herself, feeding them with her own saliva as they change from worm-like larvae into pupae and finally adults. The queen does not leave the nest this whole time, getting nutrition from her now useless wing muscles in order to survive. Ants undergo a complete metamorphosis. Most of the eggs eventually develop into small female worker ants that begin their lifetime of hard work by gathering food for the queen, making sure she is well fed. The queen will never leave the nest again, living there for 10 to 20 years, perhaps even longer. As the mother of the colony, she has her own special chamber. Her only job from this point on is to lay eggs. The worker ants carry the eggs from the queen's chamber into nurseries, where they keep the eggs clean and moist by licking them until they hatch. Nurseries are places to breed and care for young animals or plants. Then they carry the larvae into separate chambers to feed them. Black ants eat other insects, any crumbs that we can find, and the honeydew of aphids. Honeydew is a sugary liquid made by the aphids. The ants collect the honeydew and protect the aphids from predators. 
We chew the food up well and put it in a pouch in our mouths where the liquid is squeezed out of it. We spit out the solid parts and swallow the liquid. Remember, we have two stomachs, one being a crop for storing food. So worker ants come back to the nest with crops full of food for the young. As they grow, the larvae molt a few times, and after a few weeks, they spin cocoons. The worker ants move these newly formed pupae into much drier chambers, where they rest until they are ready to gnaw their way out into the world. As social insects, ants cooperate in many ways. When these new workers emerge, some will help care for the queen and larvae, and some will build and repair the tunnels, while others will guard the nest. These guards, called soldier ants, have larger heads and jaws than the other ants, and they place their bodies across the entrance to the nest to defend the colony. All ants, including soldier ants, emit or give off chemical signals that other ants smell with their antennae. Soldier ants use these signals to warn the colony of danger. This is one way that ants communicate or share information. Another way ants communicate is through touch. If an ant is hungry, it taps a food gatherer lightly with its antennae to let it know that it would like to eat. They exchange the food mouth to mouth in what looks like little kisses. When food is shared, the ants also share and pass along some chemical information important for the entire colony. If one of us ants gets trapped when the soil around us caves in, we produce a squeaky sound by rubbing together joints, and other ants hear the cry for help through their legs. Before I leave, I want to introduce you to another social insect that some people mistakenly call white ants. Do you think these look like ants? They're not. They are termites. Termites are more closely related to cockroaches, and yet they do not have hard exoskeletons. They are soft-bodied and nearly blind. They would not survive as solitary insects on their own, but they are very successful social insects. There are several differences between termites and the other social insects you have learned about. Honeybees, paper wasps, and ants. Termites do not go through as many stages of development. They skip the pupa stage, so their metamorphosis is incomplete. Termite society is a bit different as well. Both a king and a queen rule termite colonies. They start a colony together. The queen is the most important member of the colony, sometimes laying six or seven thousand eggs a day. She is so well protected by the countless numbers of worker termites that it is almost impossible to find her within the colony. Just in case something should happen to the royal couple, termite colonies include substitute kings and queens as well. Termite workers perform jobs similar to the worker ants' jobs, but the job of guarding the colony rests with a small number of soldiers. Equipped with strong legs and long, powerful jaws, unlike honeybees, paper wasps, and ants, where all the workers are female, in termite colonies, both male and female workers are important members of society. Termites' favorite food is wood. They can be very destructive if they choose to eat through the walls of a house. Destructive means they cause a lot of damage or harm. Depending on where they live, some termite species eat insects, waste materials, and fungus. They build their temperature-controlled nests underground, inside fallen trees, in timber, and in tree branches. Does this nest look a bit like a wasp nest? I think so. It's made of chewed wood and saliva, like a wasp nest, but with added mud and soil. Some termites build mounds above ground to house their colonies. These towering mud structures are hard as rock, and some are as tall as a two-story house. Lots of teamwork goes into building these mounds with incredible air conditioning systems to keep the chambers cool in very hot climates. 
Next time, you'll hear from an insect that glows in the dark. Until then, be thinking about who that might be.